Okay, today we're going to talk about uh, some free software that you can download uh, by the name of ChemSketch. Um, ChemSketch is uh, you know, basically a tool that you can use to draw chemical structures, uh, some basically chemical or chemistry lab setups. Uh, basically, it is a good, easy tool to help you make your uh, lab reports more professional looking. Um, when you first open ChemSketch, uh, it'll maybe look kind of intimidating to you because there's lots of tools, uh, lots of options. Um, however, we're not really going to learn a lot of the things that you can do uh, with ChemSketch. We're going to learn a lot of the basic tools um, that you need just uh, to make to draw some structures and some uh, lab apparatus. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So you'll notice, uh, first of all, there are two drawing modes in ChemSketch. Uh, the first one you can see at the top left here is structure mode and then you have draw mode. Uh, structure mode is just like it sounds. It's the one that you would use to draw your chemical structures. Um, draw mode is the mode that you use to kind of add graphics and uh, other things to your, uh, to your drawing. Um, and you'll notice when you click the draw mode that your button options change and a lot of your menu items change. Uh, so if you're looking for something in ChemSketch, uh, like a menu item, and you think, man, I thought that menu uh, selection was there, but now I can't find it, uh, just look to make sure you're in the right mode because those menus uh, change depending on the mode you're in. Uh, let's go back to structure mode. Structure mode is the mode that you will use to mostly start out with because uh, uh, that is the mode that you use to draw structures. So most of the time uh, you need to start there. So if you notice on the left, uh, let's go ahead and start by drawing a few structures so you can see uh, how it works. If you'll notice on the left, you have uh, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, several of the elements that are commonly used. Uh, of course, uh, there's just a few elements here. Uh, obviously, there's lots of other elements that you can pick. If there's not, if you need an element and it's not in this list, go to the top and you can see there's a periodic table. You can click on the periodic table and you can just pick pretty much any element that you want to use and you can uh, add that element to your structure. Um, cancel and we'll just start with some of the ones in the quick access toolbox over here. Um, all right, so let's start. We'll just click on carbon and we'll just add a carbon. All right, you'll notice, the first thing you'll notice is when I add that carbon, it doesn't just add carbon. It adds carbon and four hydrogens. Uh, and you might be thinking, why does it add all those extra hydrogens? Um, well, with ChemSketch with uh, nonmetals, um, if you remember from chemistry, nonmetals form a certain number of covalent bonds, normally form a certain number of covalent bonds. There are always exceptions, uh, but as a normal rule, carbon would form four covalent bonds. And so ChemSketch automatically uh, fills those four bonds with hydrogens. Uh, it does that for all nonmetals. Uh, so if we go to nitrogen, um, if you look on your periodic table, nitrogen normally forms three covalent bonds. So when I add a nitrogen, you can see I get three hydrogens. Uh, oxygen, of course, two. And uh, your halogens like fluorine are going to be one. So it automatically fills those out. Now, if you add an element that is not a, uh, this, uh, a metal, it's not a non-metal, then instead of putting a hydrogen, it just puts it with its normal, um, normal charge. Let's get one like uh, calcium. So if I want to do a calcium, and you can see it's a two plus charge. So it treats metals and non-metals a little bit differently. Um, all right, now that I have a few structures on here, let me show you another tool. Um, up here to the left, this is called the select and move tool. If I pick it, I can point to something and I can either move it, um, or if I want, I can come up here and hit go edit and either copy and paste it or delete it. Um, you can select more than one thing at a time. Um, you don't have to use the uh, menu. You can use the keys on your keyboard. I can hit the delete button and delete these. Uh, so here, yeah, I can delete all these and start over. So let's start again with nitrogen. 
So if I click, you'll see I get my three hydrogens. So now if I want to add something to that to make another structure, um, then I basically just start adding to it. And you'll notice what happened on the nitrogen is it replaced one of the hydrogens with this oxygen. Um, and of course oxygen has two covalent bonds, so now oxygen has um, one hydrogen in addition to its covalent bond, and nitrogen has uh, two hydrogens in addition to the covalent bond to the oxygen. So as I add things, you can see it just replaces uh, one of the hydrogens with the element that you add. Uh, so you can just start kind of drawing out your structures. Now, one thing I want to point out when you're drawing with carbon, if you'll notice, okay, I've got a carbon. So look what happens when I add another carbon. You know, wow, that's just a line. Um, and I can keep adding carbons, and it just looks like this squiggly line. Um, this is a, a way of representing um, organic structures that you haven't really seen a whole lot of now. Um, it's a way to simplify it so it's not cluttered looking. Um, if you want to see everything that's in there, you can simply select it, go to Tools, Structure Properties, and you can either click on how many carbons. So if I want to show all my carbons, then I can hit Apply, and now you can see I've got all my carbons in there in that structure. Now it looks pretty ugly, um, so if you want to make it look nicer, you can select it. You can hit a button up here that's called Clean Structure. And the Clean Structure kind of straightens it up, makes it more even. Um, and you might be thinking, wow, look at all those hydrogens. It just looks like a mess. Um, so if you don't want, if you want to kind of spread the hydrogens out, uh, it normally by default puts them right next to the uh, uh, carbon, but you can click on hydrogen and you can start just kind of manually putting them in and they'll look a little bit more like what you are accustomed to seeing. I can go ahead and do that for all of them and you can see now I've replaced them all. Now let's clean it again, and you can see that looks much better. That looks much more like what you are accustomed to see. Um, of course, you might be wondering what is the reason for kind of that line structure. Well, when you get large structures, uh, the lines just simplify things. It, it looks much cleaner. Uh, for example, if I draw something like a benzene ring, which is basically uh, six carbons in a ring with some double bonds. Um, I can do it manually here with uh, carbons. Just drag two. Um, and I think I, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Get that right. Okay, so I can make the ring here, um, and I can add some double bonds. The way you add double bonds is you just basically with start and just click down on um, where you want to start and hold down your left mouse button and just move over to your next um, atom and then release. And you can see it pops a double bond in there. I can do that here, and I can do that here, and I can get some double bonds. Now you'll also notice that on the right hand side there's some uh, kind of quick structures that you can add that uh, make it easier so you don't have to draw them all by hand. Uh, let's go ahead and get this benzene that I drew, it's pretty ugly, so let's go ahead and get it and clean it up, make it nicer, so you can see that's a lot nicer. Um, now what I was saying about the reason they use these lines is this is much uh, simpler to look at than if we put all the carbons and the hydrogens in there. Uh, for example, 
if I select that, remember go back to tools, structure properties, and I can show all my carbons. Um, you can see it looks very cluttered. Um, it's hard to really tell what's going on. I can kind of pull my hydrogens out so I can see more what's going on. Um, and then once again, I can clean it up so it's kind of symmetrical. And you can see it better like this. But in the case of very large structures, sometimes it's easier just to look at it um, in this kind of line form. So uh, the question, you, uh, the, the, the way you need to interpret these is, let's draw one here. Yeah, I'll leave, I'll leave that double bond there. Okay, so let's clean this up. I'm gonna select it, hit clean structure. Okay, so now I've got my little carbon line structure. So if you see this, how do you know what's there without showing everything? Um, well, it's pretty simple. So every time there's an end and a corner, there's a carbon. So you can see this one has one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. And then you assume, it shows you if there's any double bonds, and then you can assume that there are hydrogens there that uh, basically fill out all four of carbon's normal uh, covalent bonds. So for example, on this end carbon, it has one bond, but then it has these three hydrogens uh, that make it have four total covalent bonds. So you just assume that the hydrogens are there, it doesn't show them. So here, you, get, you see two covalent bonds, so it would take two hydrogens. So here there's three covalent bonds, so as you would guess, there's one additional hydrogen, same thing here, um, two hydrogens and then three. So um, you should learn basically how to recognize or, or interpret these kind of uh, drawings. You will see them occasionally. Uh, certainly you'll see them probably pop up a little bit on the AP exam. Uh, now, these, this kind of uh, shorthand uh, does not really apply to, I mean, the carbon is the only thing it does like this. If I put something in there like nitrogen um, and let me replace something, I'll replace this with nitrogen. So if you want to replace an atom, you just say, click on nitrogen, come over here and just click it. Whoops, clicked it one time too many. And you can see it replaced that carbon with a nitrogen. Now it actually shows the nitrogen. Obviously, if it, it has to show everything but carbon. Um, otherwise, you wouldn't know what element it is. So, pretty much, if it's if it's if it doesn't show the element, it's carbon. Um, if it's any other element, it'll show it. Uh, so you can see your nitrogen here, um, and you know, I can do some others as well. Um, there's an oxygen. And if I want to do a double bond on that, I can. Uh, yeah, you can see I can do a double bond and. This is what this kind of shorthand structure will look like. Now, for your uh, lab reports, the main thing I'm concerned about is that I can see uh, everything and it looks kind of clean and neat. So if you want to do your, uh, your, your rings like this or if you want to do them with the little shorthand notation, I don't really care which way you do it um, as long as I can see it. Now, something like, uh, let's say we pick this. Now, something like that would not be acceptable because you know you can't even tell what's going on you can't see the double bonds you can't um, but this is okay um, or that's okay um, either one of these is okay as long as I can see the structure and it's neat and nice looking and not cluttered up um, either either methods okay all right so that uh, pretty much concludes the basic structure drawing. Uh, there's lots of more things that you can do here. Um, and I'm gonna go split this up into a couple different videos um, and then you can just, um, I'll, I'll come back next time and show you a few more things that you can do.